And the boldness that you gain after speaking affirmations over yourself, the more you hear it, the more you believe that it's true. And welcome to Premier Fitness. I'm Gene Williams, your yoga instructor, and I'm here to tell you about the benefits of yoga. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. You have just tuned in to Where is the Love? I am your host. I am Stephanie Hawkenhall. Joining me is my co-host, my son, Gene Williams. Good day, mate. Top of the morning to you. Oh, your thing is, I hear static. Uh, I might have to fix mine. Don't worry about it. I, I might have to fix my end. Um, Again, thank you for joining us uh, today on our shows. We have been talking about adult bullying and son, tell them how they can, while I fix my mic, tell them how the places that they can watch us. All right. I know for sure POD TV uh, backslash is it L-I-V-E. Yes. All right. Amazon Fire, Roku. Uh, you can also check us out on uh, you still Love Misunderstood this? Institute. Me? Okay. Uh, Love Misunderstood okay. Institute. Yes. On uh, YouTube or on Premier Fitness 0210 on YouTube. Did I hit them all? Yes. Is that all? Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, uh, Amazon so, Fire. Did I say Amazon, uh, Amazon Fire? Amazon Fire and Roku. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, those are what you said, POD TV space, L-I-V-E. And you can watch us live on TV. If you want to comment and join in on the conversation, join us on our YouTube channels and comment. We can see your comments and we can conversate with you. We have been tackling the subject of adult bullying. Why? Because so many adults say that they don't bully. And we have been bringing guests on our show to share um, their stories about their bullying experiences as children and as adults. So we have a guest today. You want to add anything before we bring on our guest? No, we just have a great, uh, uh, a great show and very informative show coming up for you. So I'm looking forward to this. One. So I am going to uh, introduce our guest to you. Our guest is Kenitra Moselle. Um, Grace for this is her business, and she'll introduce herself and tell you more about her as she comes to the stage. Come on now, Kanitra. Hey, hey. hey. we going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Yeah. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Hey girl, what's good, y'all? Thank y'all for having me. I'm so excited Welcome. to be on with y'all. I'm excited for the conversations that need to be had. Oh, yeah, yes, absolutely. and so am I. So, Kanitra, tell us about yourself. Tell us, you know, about you, and then tell us, you know, a little bit about your business to get the conversation started, so they know who who they're listening to. Excellent. So I will start by saying, um, again, thank you for having me. And uh, I'm a lady on a mission. All right. Um, I am impacting the world so that we can grieve, we can heal, Absolutely. and we can build. I'm going to say it again. I'm on a mission to help us all grieve, heal, and build. And so um, I'm on this mission because I was introduced to widowhood at the age of 36. I know I only look 22. However, <laughs> it was the catalyst. <laughs> Grief was the catalyst for my wellness journey. And so 
Um, I began to lean into doing the wellness work. I started therapy. I started journaling. I had a grief coach it. and it was a beautiful roller coaster of all of the right things to see the person who's sitting before you today. And so you see grace for this behind me. You see grace for this on the merch um, because out of my journey, uh, birth uh, was birth grace for this. And so I started a community for women, especially for women of faith, because we've been in the church so long. My God, we don't know how to take care of the human in us because our spirit is just mm. so all of the things, which it is, but it doesn't negate the fact that we're spirit, soul, and body. And right. uh, we work, we yeah. focus on wellness work personally, relationally, and for professionally. So you can find me on YouTube every single Wednesday at 12 o'clock because it's wellness work Wednesday. So I'm excited, um, excited yeah. to to share more with you all during the conversation today. And tell them your YouTube channel so they can uh, go to your YouTube channel. If you type in Grace for this, you're going to see something with a flower or something pretty. You can type in Grace for this. The <laughs> handle is actually at Kingdom Advocate because I'm about all things kingdom and community. So you can look in Kingdom Advocate, but if you put in Grace for this, baby, you're going to see content and videos for days. That's awesome. And it's exciting that um, you were able to find, well, let me just say this first. Many people, when things happen in their lives, they tend to stay stuck. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, you know, that way for many years with this, you know, concerning the subject of bullying. I didn't even know what I was experiencing as an adult. I didn't know that it was bullying. So the thing is, when we realize our pain. One of the things that I came to understand is that, okay, this is a pain that you're experiencing, or this is the thing that has happened in your life. Do you want to stay here? You know, this is how you're feeling about this thing. Do you want to stay here or do you want to move forward? And so in moving forward, you don't know, you're walking by faith. You have no idea what's ahead of you or, you know, and taking those steps, but you just know that you don't want to be where you are no more. You made a choice. This is not what I want. This is not what I want to keep experiencing. So even though you became a widow at such a young age, you know, that wasn't, death is not something that we plan or that we know when it's going to happen. But the thing is, it happened to you and you grieved for a while, I'm sure. And then you got to a point and I call it a fork in the road. You got to a point where you're like, OK, I can. This is how I feel. Do I want to stay here or do I want to move forward? And like I said, in moving forward, you're walking by faith and you have no idea what that road looks like, but you just know you don't want to keep the road on the road you're on. So it's great that you found that you chose healing. And then as a result of you choosing healing, I mean, look at the many lives you have your business and look at the many lives that you helped move forward and not stay stuck no more. So talk to us about that. Oh, my gosh. So. You said so many things and I'm like, <laughs> how I respond to that? I, I want to speak to that fork in the road first. Um, I I had the opportunity to speak in Bennettsville, South Carolina yesterday. And right. the title of that message that I was able to share was, I might be grieved, but I'm not in a grave. Amen. And yeah. that fork in the road, my goodness, that fork in the road is, is such a real place. Yes, it's yeah. such a real place, and in in grief, you you might get to that fork sooner or later. But when you arrive to it, it's truly a tug of war of of choosing alignment or allegiance. Yeah, you can choose allegiance to the thing that hurt you, that wounded you. Right. You can choose allegiance to the pain, or you yeah. can align yourself with the purpose that's supposed to come out of it. Yeah. And so I I knew I was the strong <laughs> friend. All right, Jean, look, I knew I was the strong friend. I knew yeah. I had the capacity to deal with painful things for extended periods of time and nobody knew it because I know how to wear it. Yeah. And I said, I said yeah. Me, this this is not this is not the moment for the for the strong friend to shine. Because yeah. if you play that game with yourself, you will put yourself in a grave, sis. And I just yeah. said, oh, no. 
I'm going to lean into it, but it still took time because I had yes. unlearning. And I will say that's um, that that fork in the road led me down a pathway. And something I say in my community is uh, we're growing through grief. We're archiving the healing journey. And then you build what helped you heal. And that's what I did. I leaned into the grief. I finally started journaling. So I have journals. And then what I walked through, I put it in the book. Wow. Yeah. I have a devotional mm -hmm. called Grace for This, a 21-day journey for women growing through grief. And yeah. we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do at the fork in the road. We just right. know we have to make a decision. And yeah. so now I'm excited to share some direction to going down that fork in the road. That's the yeah. better yeah. way to go. And sometimes you turn back to the right, but we yeah. can get back left. <laughs> you know? yeah. Or yeah. Sometimes you go left. Let's get you back right. We'll do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. So share some, uh, Gene, you want to ask her something? Yeah, well, I was going to say, I love, I love the credo of your company, grieve. And the first, the first part of grieving is to acknowledge that you're, experiencing something that, that you know you are so, something that we said in the uh, conversation with that Thursday I believe it was um that you have to not only grieve the situation but grieve who you were then can you can you can you touch on that a little more oh my gosh you know what that really kind of rolls into um some of what I was thinking about around the conversation of of, of bullying because right when you have been in an experience where somebody has mistreated you and you allowed their mistreatment, right. you can take aim at yourself for your allowance of the treatment and you can right. turn on your own self and begin bullying yourself and saying, I can't believe right. you did that. And yeah. right. I, I, I'm sitting with some things now because in my widowhood journey and my grief journey, people got passes they normally wouldn't get from me. Yeah. And I'm sitting with, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and I'm experiencing the stages of grief because of right. bullying I allowed inside of spaces where I had a void that people, now here go your plot twist, they didn't know they were doing it because it was normal for them. This was your yeah. nurse right. for you. You've been this way your whole life, so you don't yeah. know your unless I open my mouth and tell you the way you just treated me, we can't yeah. do it make feel a certain way. That's the plot twist. Mm -hmm. When you get bullied by somebody who don't know they're a bully and the bully continues because you didn't open your mouth. Right. There you go. That's a, man, that's a big thing right there. Plot that's twist. a big thing. <laughs> and, <laughs> and listen, reverse, I, reverse. Have to, I have to <laughs> I have to speak from the the other end where, you know, People aren't saying anything because I was in that place. Gene was in that place. You know, sometimes we just don't have the courage to speak up. And that's what we lacked. We lack courage because we wanted, you know, that person or those people to like us. So because of that, we became people pleasers. So sometimes you just don't, the person, you know, I mean, you say, you know, okay, you bullying me. Maybe you don't know, you know, or I'm, I'm going to let you get by with that. I'm not going to say nothing. You know, sometimes it's because you lack courage mm -hmm. not to say anything. You know, uh, you just don't have the ability to because of where your mind is. And, and in that case, your mind is, I want you to like me. So if I don't check you, yeah. then maybe you'll. <laughs> That's true. I, I, yeah. I'll say that I, 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 I have been sitting in that place. It is familiar to me because sometimes we take ownership of our own faults, right? Yeah. So because we take ownership of what yeah. we don't do well, we we will excuse somebody else's mistreatment of us because of our own mistakes. And that's yes. not correct. You don't make yourself right. a victim and a martyr because of your humanity, but that doesn't right. mean somebody else's has humanity to plague yours. Yeah. Right. There you go. There yeah. You yeah. Go. It's, it's, it is, it is challenging to navigate that, uh, to sit with it because you've hurt yourself because you didn't protect yourself. Yeah. Right, it was nobody else's responsibility to protect you more than you. Right. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, that's hard. You yeah. know, with the different types of bullies, 
uh, you know, I, when I shared that with Jean, uh, I'm you sorry, when I shared that with Jean, he um, eventually told me, you know, there's a self bully too. You can bully yourself, self bully. And I was like, what? Really? And then I looked it up and I was like, wow, I didn't know. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, often, and, and oftentimes, because of the, oftentimes because of the fact that we take on other people's perspective of us, and then we recycle it over and over again in our head, we become our worst critic. I mean, there's yeah. a whole cliche about that, you know. And it's not only because we allow, so it's like we blame ourselves for allowing the person to, to do what they did to us, and then we, in essence, co-sign it. By saying, well, but, you know, I, I feel like I deserve this for whatever reason, you know. Yeah. And it, 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 again, like you said before, it's like it, you have to, to acknowledge the fact that this is what you did. Grieve who you were at that time. Own the situation. That's the big thing. A lot of us, we don't own our, our grief, our pain, and our uh, faults. And also, we don't embrace our greatness. So it's like a, a lot of a lot of the aspects of us we have to acknowledge, especially when you're going through a situation where a person is misusing you, treating you like you're not, you know, like you're less than you are, like they're equal. Um, you know, then it, it, it's don't be like you said, don't beat yourself up about it. But it, but you definitely have to own it and and do the work to never be in that position again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think something. I'll add something real quick. I think something that I have become more aware of is my level of care. And when you are in an environment or relationship uh, where you know that person, you know their story, you know their background, you know who mistreated them. And so you can right. begin to rehearse their bad experiences in parallel right. to your mistakes with them. And then you make yourself the villain in your story and liken yourself to somebody right. else who did something more than likely it could have been with intent. It could have been not intent. But you know, when you rock with your people, anybody who comes for one of your friends, your whole squad pulls up. But what happens right. when you position yourself to be the villain and you feel like the squad needs to pull up on you? Yeah. Mm. Mm. That's good. Yeah. 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 How do you yeah. Yeah. how do you recover? How do you recover from that? Because that thing right. hits you in your heart because you know what it right. felt like when you were upset with the person who caused the offense to somebody yeah. you cared about. Mm -hmm. What happens when you are the one who has caused the greater offense to the person yeah, you right. care about because of your proximity to that person? You right. begin wow. to do your own self. Right. Uh, and yeah. give that person permission to not treat you how you need to be treated because you're still managing the fact that you made a that you were human. Yeah. Right. Nobody right. Needs to be on nobody should be on the pedestal. Right. And right. you just ask exactly. for Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, understand that we all we all are flawed. And that's the that's the fortunate and unfortunate side because from your weaknesses, once you begin to strengthen your weaknesses, you grow a better, higher vibrational version of yourself. And that's just the beauty of being, like you said, a human. You know, the the evolution. You're not supposed to be perfect. You're supposed to be constantly in the state of perfecting growing yeah. evolution it's not it's not it never gets to a stationary point where okay i'm i'm here i've arrived no it's never there you're never there it's always growth to be made you know even incrementally yeah so kanitra when you um while you were going through your grief i know that you said a little bit ago that you know some people you let get away with okay you know i'm gonna let you get away with that how was there a time can you think of a time where you actually did speak up and you did create boundaries or a boundary you know with somebody that was bullying you you know maybe not that same person but you like okay you know i let it slide you know from that person you know um but I see what's going on and I'm not going to let this keep happening to me. Mm -hmm. So was there a time when you <laughs> were able to speak up and to create a boundary, um, you know, with a person that 
you know, was bullying you and took advantage of, you know, the situation while she's grieving. And even they may not have been able to see themselves doing it or not, but, you know, how did you, did you experience that and how did you respond to it? That was really a challenging experience. Um, I, I love that we're talking about the, um, the evolution, the E in the grace back there stands for evolve, it's grieve, rest, mm. aid, community, and evolve. And when you go through your grace journey, you'll evolve into the next best version of yourself. And mm. I, I believe the experience that was illuminated the most for me when I finally decided to get language <laughs> for what my experience was and when I had enough mm. courage to yeah. say something. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the emotions, it was a very emotional moment for me. Right. And you know, your emotions are communicating to you. I realized yeah. how hurt I was. Yeah. Like, right. You, sis, you are angry. Mm -hmm. You are grieving the status of the relationship in itself. Because yeah. it is it it has it has changed, it has evolved. And whether it's somebody who's familiar to you or whether it is somebody who you do not know there we have a relationship with everybody we encounter they are either yeah. a stranger there's boundaries there there's boundaries for an acquaintance relationship there's boundaries for um, um an intimate relationship there are boundaries that we set for all of them and so when i begin to exercise some language around that i had such big emotions around it that it notified me that i had been wounded and I had capped mm -hmm. it. I had tucked it away somewhere. I had excused it. And um, the C is for community. And what I talked mm -hmm. to, to the sisters in my community about is um, after you rest from the grief that you're, experienced, you're experiencing, you begin to have clarity. You yeah. have clarity mm -hmm. about your capacity. And when you begin to exercise language and boundaries with people who have not functioned appropriately according to who you are in the season you're in, because you're going to change again. Yeah. Come on right. here. Yeah. Um, you discover who your community is. Yeah. And if people cannot respond well to what your new boundaries are, if they don't respond well to what you're communicating, then you understand that your community has changed and you have to make other adjustments other than saying right. That's so awesome. it was an introduction to the next level, to the next boundary, to what my lifestyle is going to look like. How do I choose people who I'm keeping close to me? Because I realized that when people cross this specific boundary in this specific way, it induces this specific response. And so I have to induce right. this specific change. So yeah. it introduced me to so much, <laughs> but it introduced me to myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. All of that. Love it. Love it, love it. I'm smiling <laughs> so hard because yeah. go ahead, Jean. No, I just said I love the way you just wrote that down. I right. love it. I <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. And this is so huge to me right now. And I'm so excited about my life right now because things are happening to me that I, I'm just saying I'm walking in faith in a lot of areas in my life. So it's newness. But to be able the what has come alive in me is acknowledging, okay, I'm, I'm feeling this way. Okay. I see I'm sad or I realize I'm sad. So I, I'm acknowledged. I'm, I'm sad. I'm not going to pretend like I'm not, right. but do I want to stay here? Right. And so I have that choice. I don't yeah. want to be sad. So I just start like I'm talking right now. I am happy. I am joyful. I am peaceful. Girl, listen. <laughs> <laughs> this has changed my life. I was telling my brother and his girlfriend were in town today and they took me to lunch. And so I was telling them this and I was just telling Jean yesterday. But the more I tell this, the more I see the new me. Let yes. <laughs> 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 I have a new strength, a new superpower that I never had. You know, mm -hmm. that I, I ain't gonna say that I never had, but that I never knew oh, about. Right. 
I never knew about this. And I've heard about, you know, affirmations and say affirmations and all of this, but the key piece is what I said. You know, this is how I'm feeling. Okay. So I'm going to say I'm sad. I'm going to acknowledge, I'm going to confess that I'm sad, Mm -hmm. but I'm not staying here. And then, so I just start saying, I am this, I am that. And then as I said, aloud like I'm doing now, the more I say I am or I have, the stronger I get. I'm like, man, I've been needing this all my life. Yes. But the time is now. <laughs> it's a party. Yes. <laughs> it's a coming out party. Yes. It's a coming out party. <laughs> Hello, my name is Stephanie. <laughs> nice to meet you. You have met me before. That's it. I do want to. I do want to add a, 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 a tail end to that. So I love like you're saying. I am. And you're activating the divine within. Right. Say I am. Yes. So we have to be very cognizant and very careful and judicious about how we use I am terms. Because a lot of times we use it for the other. You know, we say things that are demeaning and uh, denigrating to ourselves. So we have to be very cognizant of, of, the, of, of the terms that we use behind I am, because there is power in I am. We are reflections of the source. So everything that we say becomes a reality, regardless of your cognizant of that or not. That's, that's just a fact of reality. Yeah. yeah, so the, the thing is with the, I, you know, acknowledging the sadness, I am sad. Okay, so right. I'm going to say I am sad, but I am going to say so many I ams and I haves after that, that it's right. going to just knock that out the water because that are, <laughs> you know, out my space because that's what's been right. happening, you know, right. so being truthful about where you are and right. then saying, but that ain't it. And then the more you say, I am, or I am successful, I am prosperous, I am beautiful, I am, you know, whatever. The more you say that, if you say 10 or 20 of them to that one, I am not, Mm -hmm. or I am, and the negative thing after it, it blows that neck. This is what I have witnessed for the last couple of weeks. And so that one negative thing that I acknowledge that this is a real thing. This is how I'm really feeling. That don't mean nothing, you know, because of the 10 to 20, you know, plus I am's that I said, the more I said it, the, you know, the more you believed it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We rehearse, we rehearse narratives, whether they're negative positive uh one of my favorite right. scriptures talks about life and death being in the power of the tongue yeah and you yeah. Eat the fruit of that which you speak so what is it that you are rehearsing yeah right and anything yeah. you say yeah. you thought it first yeah right yeah yes. yep. yeah and also Ooh. i wanted to add an addendum to what you said so in situations like you said when you you can say i feel because feelings are transitory. They're temporary. You know what I'm saying? But I am is who you are at the core of your being. You know what I'm saying? So you I feel sad, you know. That's temporary. You'll 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 go through that transition and you'll come to another level of it. But I am, I am powerful, I am beautiful, I am intelligent. I am, I am. But the feelings that are, you know, negative, those are feelings that are transitory. And it's like if if you if we differentiate that. Say I am the great things I feel, you know, the things that are negative or low vibrational, then the I am, like you said, they build you up. I mean, it's still the same thing. It's just yeah. it's just another term. It's another yeah. term to help uh consciously create uh your reality. Consciously create. I like that. <laughs> consciously yeah, that's 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 good. Like true truth and the fact is, I feel this way. The truth is, I am what exactly. my is about me. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So y'all, right. y'all, y'all just got that in three different languages. If you ain't get it, <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, I just saw, uh, looked at some of Mark's comments. Hey, Mark, she is not from South Carolina, but she was in South Carolina yesterday. She's from Georgia. So, um, and another thing, uh, he asked about um, bullying at funerals. Have you, you know, did you have experience with that? You know what? I have not. But I immediately have I immediately begin to see pictures from Facebook and YouTube where people have acted an absolute fool at funerals. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Grief and death brings out the worst in people because they don't have wellness skills. Yes, so right. people are 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 volleying for the attention of the masses when somebody right. dies because yeah. you have you have a collective group of people all in one place. And somebody who needs the attention, somebody who mm. needs to be her, or somebody who's who is so insecure that they have to make a spectacle of themselves, those people try to shine really big and bright um, during times of, of a home going. We say home, we don't say funeral. We don't say the funeral. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. say home funeral, going. I'm joking. Right. <laughs> home going <laughs> celebrations. All right, my dear. Life, right? Um, I, I, I know that that's something that is challenging to navigate is who's making decisions about what. Yeah. And you have to sit with yourself about who who can make a decision and what decision you can let go of. I had a situation where we were planning my husband's home going and my mother in law wanted to do something a specific way. And I said, you know, a specific thing. And I realized that it got swayed back the other way. And I said, Kenitra, that's your whole husband, baby. Nobody trumps you. Let her have it. That is her son. Yeah. Allow her to have it. Yeah. And, it's, and you have to be good with yourself to give somebody that in a moment yeah. where you're just as sensitive as the right. other person who's volleying right. for a thing that they need. And right. in that moment, I yielded. Because yeah. she needed it, and I had it to give. Yeah. Right. You know. That, that is. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and that was before I started on the wellness work journey. But I realized I don't have to go back and forth with you because we both are unique people in the situation. He ain't had but one mama. He ain't had but one wife. Right. That's yeah. good. So it, ain't, it ain't a competition. <laughs> You know, yeah, you but you got to be right. good with yourself. You got to be clear on who you are, because if you're not, and then then you then you then you check into the game. That shouldn't even be a game, because yeah, game right. Game. Yeah. You know, yeah. So it's it, it is challenging. It is very challenging because you have to navigate so many people, so many people's level of awareness and wellness, yeah. right. all at the same time. It's very complicated. Yeah. Shout out to all the um the the funeral. The funeral, um, what did the the funeral um the coordinator? Uh, my husband's first cousin, their family. Shout out to the Thorns. I'm shouting, I'm calling out names. Shout out to the Thorns. <laughs> they did a magnificent job making sure that Gerald C. Mason's funeral arrangements were amazing. I have never had an experience as phenomenal as I y'all so Thornton Mortuary in Atlanta takes good care of you. Um, what you call that? What they call? I'm high maintenance. <laughs> I was high maintenance for this home going service too. Okay, so I just when you have a when you have a mortuary team or service that are delivering hospitality and love in that space, they know how to navigate the social work that your family hadn't doing. Yeah, right. Man. I have they need degrees in this. <laughs> Yeah. I have a uh, little plaque in my bathroom that says, you say high maintenance like it's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I'm like, but I'm like, what? What's wrong with it? <laughs> I want what I want. Right. <laughs> you can just set your expectations. You already know what's up. Right. <laughs> what's well, up? Yeah. What it is, yeah. yeah, thank you, Jay. <laughs> you know what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Kanitra, we have covered. A Go ahead, Jean. Well, so uh, uh, we were talking about earlier grace for this, mm -hmm. and I love like the tag eventful purpose. 
like you, you yeah you mind going a little deeper into that because I, I definitely want the people to to know what you do uh as a event curator okay awesome so great great question um i am a mixture of a nurse and a planner i'm a registered nurse i got a master's degree in leadership and management in nursing i worked at the bedside for six years and i worked in data analysis and information and outcomes for eight nine years but on the side i was building an event planning business i've always been really skillful about that and so um in grief being the catalyst for the wellness work i realized that there is a lack of trauma-informed care inside of event planning catch that we plan events we plan conferences you plan plan weddings you plan retreats you plan all of these different things however based on who your target audience is are you really considering the barriers and the challenges that they're experiencing to even come to your event how are you going to attract the person that you're truly called to impact and do you even know who that person is right i do i do coaching and consulting as well um, um because i'm really passionate about how we show up as leaders and visionaries um inside of building and curating the experience that's going to attract the people who we know we're called to you can have the best speech in the world, but if the arena is empty, how is it impacting the people? And yeah. I'm, I'm super, super um, passionate about planning for impact. I am uh, helping leaders and visionaries uh, to build a hospitality that heals and then plan for impact. Your hospitality has to be what it needs to be according to who you're called to serve. And a lot of times we don't we don't navigate that well because the vision is so big in our head. We're just trying to be compliant. We're trying to execute. We're trying to do all of the things, but how are you actually caring for the people who you're called to? Yeah. So I, I'm very passionate about that. And I, and I honestly, I had to really step away from the event planning because I had to put everything that I had into building grace for this. Our events are amazing. <laughs> like I am floored by how our events happen because I don't just put things together. I really sit and I really, I listen, I pray and I ask God, like, okay, what's going on? What do they need? And he shows me because I'm building what helped me heal. Kenita, yeah, what right. did you need? What offended you? What conversations didn't go well? What did somebody say that triggered you the wrong way? How do you need to say it? How do you package this verbiage? What have you done that negatively impacted somebody? And how do you adjust that in what you build so you don't recreate that same bad experience? Right? And wow. so I'm passionate about uh, replacing old bad memories with new memories intentionally for people. So um, all of 2023, has been that inside of grace for this um we do a wellness work summit which i'll see, share more about we've got one march the 30th augusta georgia is hybrid i'm excited about it uh we do a ready set network event because a lot of us are called to entrepreneurship uh, and starting businesses but we can't do it well because we still grieving and we haven't leaned into our own grief journey uh we do a conference that that is kind of a scaling of of the women who are in uh, entrepreneurship and leadership and so we have a grace for this conference um there is so many things happening inside of the grace for this space and god has um afforded me the opportunity to use it as a model on how we need to build events that are about community conversation and collaboration so thank you for asking me that because that's my sweet spot you see i got excited <laughs> <laughs> and well you should you're doing yeah. great work and it's, and it's beautiful it's beautiful how you are again passionate and also very methodical and detailed about how you execute and that's a big thing and like you said hospitality is huge with events because uh often, i mean you know no situation is perfect but when you have a a, a hospitality team or or a uh ethos of uh, courtesy and customer mm -hmm. service with with your execution, and it makes people want to come back. It's like, well, you know, that wasn't perfect, but everything else was fine. It was so nice, and that other, you know, and it just it draws people back to you, like, hey, that was family. I felt at home. <laughs> hey, Ebony. Coach Eb in the county. <laughs> yeah, that was good. I appreciate the ethos. <laughs> Need to be putting in my journal. <laughs> <laughs> you are mess. Mark uh, said there's a couple of uh, people watching. Terry Bird, uh, a, a holistic person. 
is watching. And right. then also Toys on Ninth is watching on Instagram. Um, so shout out to y'all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Ed, for being out here, girl. <laughs> Go to um, it's morning. <laughs> um, and he's Mark said, told you Kanitra is trying to audition for Usher in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> he's not lying. <laughs> he's not lying. Y'all missed it back. Uh, uh, the scene uh, uh, was uh, you made me wanna. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> we count down mm -hmm. the half mm -hmm. We just count right. down. <laughs> That is all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Take you back to undergrad. Get in trouble. Yeah, right. I messed up. Now I got to set my mic. I was doing too much. <laughs> Look at you. <laughs> calm, calm down, Steph. You out here. Right, right. Your See your hands to yourself. You got to learn how to use all those new muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do my hands. <laughs> oh, that's so good. You did it again. You did it again. All right. So, actually, I wanted to ask you about wellness work summit and the events that you host on uh on youtube oh yes oh yes we're gonna talk about it all come on now get me to it <laughs> get me to it right i'll try to stay as calm as i can so um <laughs> uh, like i said earlier every wednesday on my youtube channel um we do a wellness work wednesday because i'm committed to having that conversation um in a digestible manner wellness work is hard right. i'll tell you this this is a 21 day, 21 day devotional. Y'all see, y'all see how little it is. Right. You need all them 21 days and some. <laughs> right. Because exactly. you can't, you can't rush through this. And the level of honesty that it takes to do wellness work, you have to pace yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm also a recovering workaholic. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. A lot of my patterns are set like a work week and you take you take the weekend off. And so in my book, we go through the grace G.R.A.C.E. journey Monday through Friday. We take the week off and we jump back in. And so when I do the wellness work Wednesday um, on once a week, it's, it's like our therapy check in. All right. Let's focus on our three points today. What are we going to talk about? Let's have an actual focal point. I love a meeting and an agenda. I thrive in environments like that. That's just who I, that is who I am. But when we're choosing love. to sit with ourselves and do the hard work, you need an agenda. Yeah. Why? Because your emotions are going to try to take you everywhere, including denial and avoidance. Yeah. And you need some structure that keeps you focused on the goal, which is to get better which is to grow through your grief, which is to take ownership yeah. of your wellness journey. And yeah. that is our focus when we do that um, Wellness Work Wednesday, taking ownership of your wellness journey personally, relationally, and professionally. So there's a pathway. I have pathways in everything. There's a model. <laughs> and, and when it. I coach people, I, I help them find their model in their healing journey so they can help other people build uh, what help them heal. So I'm telling y'all, Come meet me. Type Grace for this in on YouTube. I promise you I'll pop up. It'll probably be green because we just did a 21-day challenge live and we went through the devotional together as a community. Amazing wow. experience. Yeah. Amazing. If you are looking for a safe place, a safe space to walk through some stuff, get this book on Amazon and go to my YouTube channel. It'll, it'll be like I'm just sitting there working through it with you every day for 30 minutes, 30 quick minutes. Yeah like your first cousin i promise you it'll be a beautiful experience beautiful experience so um that's the first good one. your best friend <laughs> yeah yeah um and then the wellness work the wellness work summit so uh if if you go to my youtube channel the last video was up was a party because we celebrate wins honey we gotta <laughs> celebrate ourselves we do not look at you y'all he couldn't have. we don't celebrate ourselves <laughs> So at the end of every week is Wellness Wednesday. Um, and anytime something happens, I've had to teach myself to pause and celebrate and sit in the moment. Because I like to, y'all yeah. yeah, know I'm a planner. So I plan my own celebrations. But are wow. you actually sitting in the moment to rest in what you completed? Wow. And so I'm right. learning that. I'm learning that simultaneously and celebrating the wins and teaching that to our community as well. So we dropped the date for the Wellness Work Summit. I am excited. It is on March the 30th. And I'll tell you that growing through grief is a movement. 
the 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 inception at this inception all of this was born because i decided to grow through the grief and in inside of everything that's happening inside of grace for this i understand that growing through grief is not just for the sisters it's for the brothers too it's for the men too we have Everybody, to teach our children yeah. our sons and our daughters need to know yeah. how to manage the grief they're experiencing and i actually have an interview tomorrow we're going to talk about it from the kids perspective wow. and and the growing through grief journey is a movement and so our mission right. is to um, initiate conversations like the one we're having today that acknowledge we need to do the wellness work. Uh, secondly, we want to connect people in the community with resources uh, that's going mm -hmm. to help them with their wellness routines. And then thirdly, right. we want to get people to commit to creating their own personal wellness regimen. You need right. your own routine for you. You can't look at what I do and think it's going to work for right. you. For kind of right. Species, right. Baby, ain't but one me. Right. You need you what's going to work for you. And so it's not a going through grief movement. That is what our mission is, to have the conversation and connect you to the resources and get you to commit to what you need for your wellness regimen. So we're going to have that conversation. Uh, we're pulling in the brothers on this one. Right. It's, grace. Yeah. it's grace and grit. Okay, baby. Yeah. It's grace and nice grit. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because the grit works. It works both ways. Whether you are a man or whether you are a woman, it's gritty to own the grief. Yep. Yeah. And you're not going to get to the grace without the grit. So let's have this conversation. And we're pulling the brothers into the room and have a conversation with us. So I'm excited about the collaboration that's happening. Like I said, it's hybrid. Uh, you can you can go um, uh, yeah. to graceforthis.net. And you can check on how to partner with the movement. You'll get the information. You'll get the details. You'll get the link to stream it. And you can sow into it. You can read it by getting the book. You can fund it by buying some merchandise. Um, what did I say? You can wear it by buying some merchandise. So you can fund yeah. it by partnering with the movement. So I'm I'm super excited about what we're gonna what we're doing inside of the the I call it a GTG movement. Okay. <laughs> so tell tell the people about the grit. Um, you know, tell as much as you want to tell about the grit so people understand about. Oh, my the gosh. So the the part of the look, there's so there's so many things about the grit that are important. I will say that the first thing that I realized for me is that um, I am who I am and I am as well as I am right now because I have some strong men in my life. I'm talking about more than my biological daddy and my biological brother. Yeah. I'm talking about I got some brothers in my life who love me like they sister and sat with me and listened to me and were present with me as I navigated some challenging things with experiencing the void of your spouse. Yeah. Like, golly, do, do you let's consider this. Do you think I wanted to fill my voids in some other ways? Yeah, isn't it, isn't it reasonable for for you to try to fill a void with something because yeah. the thing that you had was so big? Like this spot is big, yeah. and it, something needs to fit here. Right. Thank you, Jesus. They helped me not plug into wrong and unhealthy places. So the, awesome. grit is, the grit is for the men in your life who hold you down and keep you safe when you're not safe for your own self. Yeah, that That's part. Awesome. That part. The grit is for. For the men who are doing the wellness work, but it don't look pretty like we make it. We make yeah. we as women, we yeah. can beautify anything. Yeah. What? We are gifted <laughs> to do that, right? But the men are different. Men yeah. are different. So I'm excited to to create an experience where the men will come in and have a conversation. Y'all, my YouTube channel is gonna be lit all March long. It's March Madness. Why? Because <laughs> the men are coming to the channel. And they have permission to express themselves. And you're going to sit and you're going to listen and you're going to appreciate and you're going to learn. And you're going to apply it for the men in your life. Try me if you want to. Let me find out. <laughs> um, you got a paddle and you smack it on the head. What if, we, if you're growing through the grief, it's empowering you to evolve. You can't be the same old version, messy version of yourself if you're truly evolving. If, if I'm going through a grace journey, then my brother can go through a grace journey too. And I'm going to make room for him. And that's yeah. what Grace and Grit is doing. It is making room. It is making room for them. And last thing I'll say about this, and I ain't, I ain't going to go in because we, we about got like 10 minutes. Now, okay. And we keep it about 1.30. <laughs> my husband and my father were rebranding the men's ministry at our church. And the name of it was True Grit. 
Mm. They hadn't even been doing it for a year yet when he passed away. And I, I sit and I think about the work that he did before I even realized that I was graced for this journey. The grit came first. The grit mm -hmm. paved the way for the grace. So it's mm -hmm. going to always be some grace and grit. It's, it's about to be a whole situation, sugar. It's about to be <laughs> a whole situation. And I'm glad to be making room for my brothers. Yeah. Like I am. Thank you for that. Thank I am you. not Thank about. You. I am not about the toxic version of women empowerment. If it's going to devalue another person, if it's going to be yeah. dehumanize somebody else, I'm not subscribing to that. So that is not what grace for this is. It is about creating a safe place for women to own their wellness. But growing through grief, that's for everybody, baby. Yep. We all need it. So I'm so glad to introduce my brothers into that space and create room for them to have permission as well. Yeah, that's that's great. And it's very much needed. Um, I um, learned about grief uh, working for hospice. Mm -hmm. And so I worked for hospice for five years at one company and for one year at another company. And I didn't know the things about grief that I knew about, you know, or, you know, things concerning death, you know, uh, what was coming, you know, the steps that were coming. Um, and then I can't remember who, but the denial, the, you know, I'm, I'm hearing that I have, you know, those steps. I can't remember what they're called, but. You know, I hear this news. What is it called? Dabbed, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Thank you. And so I learned that as well, you know, and that helped me to understand, you know, what people were experiencing, what, you know, the family members that were going away, and then what they were experiencing themselves as a result of hearing, you know, they had some, uh, I don't want to use the word deadly, but some, you know, something that was incurable, you know, um, for them. Um, and so being able to talk to you, you know, about grief and then, you know, combining that with the bullying, you know, um, is big, you know, um, I mean, it's, it's just another way to look at it because we do experience grief, you know, when there's loss, you know, it could be a, a job or, you know, anything, you know, not just a person, but, you know, we do experience grief as a result of, you know, letting something go. Um, so, uh, Jean, did you have something you want to say? No, no I, I was just listening to you. Uh, Mark said, do you I think, think it is easier to grieve those who are terminal versus those who die suddenly or in an unexpected way? I say yes. Good question. Um, that's a good question. Yeah, um, because you have time to spend with the person that's terminal. And I, I say that because my mom had cancer and that's how she passed away. And so that was why I started doing hospice after she passed away, because I gave her permission to leave. Um, but so it was easier to accept that because we had time, you know, um, but those that uh, die suddenly, um, you know, that, especially if it's a tragic death, those um, things are harder to accept because that creates trauma, you know, with those that are left behind or that saw it or, you know, that experience. So, um, mm -hmm. so it is easier, you know, when they're terminal uh, to accept it, but you still go through the denial. No, they're not experiencing this. No, you know, they experience it, the person, and then the people that are around, you know, experience those steps too. So, uh, Jean, before I ask her a question, you have anything else you want to ask her? Uh, I don't think we touched on your personal bullying experiences. Yeah, that's what I was getting ready to personal. I have, so, I, have, I have weaved several of them into this conversation. Well, you have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you have, and that's been great. So as a result of looking at the list of the different types of bullies, how did you, what were your thoughts when you were reading through those? Um, and 
another question. Most people, when I say something about bullying, they say two things. Or they think, well, two things. Physical bullying, which is, you know, <laughs> the norm. That's Put the one that people on know about. Huh? They're putting your hands on somebody. Yeah. And then so, uh, and the other thing is they say kids. So did you know there were so many different types of bullying besides physical? No. I didn't not. need it. And this, this is just bullying in general because workplace has their own. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Um, I just learned that last year. So, <laughs> so these are included in the workplace, but workplace has their own, you know, like two headed snake is one. Uh, yeah, they, they have, and I haven't even brought those out yet. So what, what were your thoughts when you, you know, started reading that list in comparison to what you already knew about bullying? How did you think? What were your thoughts? I, I did not, I did not think there were so many categorizations of it. Yeah. But it also was kind of sobering as well because we compartmentalize things and all of it's misbehavior, all yeah. of it's mistreatment, and it doesn't have to be exclusive to one place. Yeah. You don't need to be doing it. You should yeah. be treating this, you should be treating people this way. Like I'm looking right. at the narcissist one, and I think I said this in our conversation. That is it's it's really challenging sometimes because we're so compassionate towards other people, especially yeah. when you start to do your own your own wellness work and your level of awareness increases, you see people and you can look mm -hmm. at why they have landed where they are. Yeah. And so you're kind of like, oh, well, that's a result of one, two, three, and they've been through one, two, three, right. and so they themselves from five, six, seven. And then you can figure out why people show up, you know, in a certain way. So I, I looked at this list. And it made me feel compassion for so many people who have who have behavioral issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, people people say, oh, the child need to go to this. The child need therapy. No, the adult in their life that taught them this stuff needs to go to therapy first and they can work through something in their household, uh, you know, to, to, to get together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it's bullying. You picking on the yeah. child and making your kid go to yeah. therapy. You ain't sat yeah. yourself in the seat. What right. are we doing? Going yeah. I'm sorry. I'm a... No, no you please, keep going. Because... <laughs> keep going. <laughs> we said a word right there. Right, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, we I, just I, started I, focusing on adult adult bullying for that very reason that you just said. You know, when I say something about bullying, I hear, oh, that's them kids. No, what about you? What about us oh. adults? We bullying each other. We got to recognize this is what we're doing. We got to deal with this trauma, you know, from our past that we never dealt with, kept pushing it under the rug. It's time to deal with this stuff. How can we teach these kids to stop bullying? How can we be examples for them of bullying if we're going to keep doing it? We didn't get right. ourselves fixed. And we got to do that first because we can tell the kids all day long, don't do this, don't do that. But we're doing it. So then they think, well, it must be OK. They're saying don't do it, but they're doing it. And we got to get fixed. The adults have to get fixed in order to okay, help right. the kids get fixed. Look, it has to happen. If you put it in Kenitra language, the adults need to go ahead and grow through their grief so they can heal. <laughs> then they can teach their kids. There you go. <laughs> the yep, exactly. And we're a team here, OK? Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's yeah, this, I mean, this list is yeah, I was surprised. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, Jean. Um uh, say go ahead. It's time to end the know. show. Go ahead and then yeah. say what you want to say for you know to end the show and then Kanitra and then I'll I will and then we'll close out. Yeah, well, I was going to say, you know, children are uh products of their environment. Yeah, you know, so they see uh the adults. Uh, have you know exhibiting certain behaviors, then they're going only going to mimic it because that's all that they know. Yeah. So, like yeah. you said, you know, if it, you know you're going through something, and the child needs to to see you work through your things, if they're in the same environment where 
you know, it's toxic, then it's easier to go back to old habits that are negative and denigrating. So, yeah. you know, yeah, like you said, the adults need to go to uh, therapy first yeah. and set the environment for healing for the child. Because yes. they're doing the work. Now they can yes. show, this is how you do. This is step right. one, two, three, one A, one B, you know what I mean? So yep. on and so forth. Yes. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that's that's good. I guess it's it's my turn and I'll just lean into it. Um this has been an amazing dialogue and I am glad that at the heart of it we got the same mission. Yeah. People need to yeah. heal before you can heal. You have to acknowledge what the problem is. Bullying right. is a manifestation of some some type of unhealed wound or trauma yeah. in yeah. Your actual life. Yeah. And my mission is to help you identify that bad boy and grow through it so you can yeah. build you those go. people heal and not harm. Right. Uh, and I say go. every time that I go live, I always end and I say life can be hard and your journey can hurt but commit to heal so your story can help. So I yeah. have enjoyed y'all um, so much. You made me sit with some things in my own life, in my own experiences, mm -hmm. and I have more language around those things because of what you guys are doing. So um, thank you for that. For those of y'all who want to connect with me, mm -hmm. I'm on over to YouTube. Just put in grace for this. Uh, we're growing through grief. Uh, we're archiving our healing journey, and we're building what helped us heal, and we're ready to help you heal too. Awesome. Oh, wow. This has been so Thank good. And I knew it was going to be. <laughs> good Nietzsche, Thank you for joining our show. Thank you for sharing, you know, all that you've shared. And I didn't realize how much grief and bullying connected until this conversation. Mm -hmm. So my way of thinking about this was not the way that this has gone. So now I have a different direction, you know, for us to go in, you know, as an organization, Love Misunderstood Institute, you know, um, adding, you know, the letting people know, you know, grief is a part of you know, why you may be bullying somebody else. You know, what have you been experiencing? I mean, there's so much that I can't even put it all in words. I just want to say thank you for, you know, for joining us. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for sharing your business. And thank you for sharing your ministry and what God is doing in you and what God has done in you and how he has helped you to help other people. So we are going to close out now. This has been amazing. Uh, <laughs> so we we uh, look forward to seeing you on our show if you're watching or if you're watching the replay next Sunday at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on Love Misunderstood Institute um, YouTube channel and Premier Fitness 0210. So we send you away with love. We send you away with peace. And we say joy 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 we send you joy peace and love take care bye for now stay for the video and kanitra will see you back in the room mark we're ready Another life Don't try to spring out Even though he had his hands so high Yo, I'm sick and tired To walk my brother's strong lies Need to come together Set a plan and then mobilize Oh, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do about all the hell that we're going Stand up, y'all, we can do this, you and me. My 
Monsanto monopolize the whole grocery line. So we all gonna have 12 toes, three thumb, three lines. If we keep in sheep, these wolves are gonna rob us blind. We sacrifice our mind space, cause the revolution only tells us lies. Oh, what are we gonna do? To the walls of Babel, come to me. Stand up, stand up, y'all. We can do this, you and me. Stand up, rise up and know you ain't gotta follow. You can leave. Stand up, stand up, y'all. We can do this, you and me. Oh, the mercy, mercy, me. The government. When will all these wars be done? Don't play the fall, but now the moment is the moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Before another mother has a moment for God. Shout out to the walls of Babylon. No, you ain't gotta follow. You can leave. Stand up, stand up, y'all. We can do this. You can leave. Stand up, shout out to the world.